Let's look at the setups this morning. And Ernie, this is how we, we look at these setups. All right, so what we want to do is let's look at these last setups coming up. We use moving averages for trend direction. We don't use them for support and resistance. These are three setups that we had this morning, actually four right here. One popped right there also just a second ago. And these are very leading indicators. They're not lagging at all. And I'll show you why. Moving averages are great for trend direction. So this is a smaller time frame. This is a five Simrenko. So our largest time frame we use in the room is a nine Simrenko for our trend chart. I'll show you that in a second. But you'll get a lot of trades off this. This is one of my favorite charts to trade the S&P 500 on. Five Simrenko, the NASDAQ futures, Dow minis. Works on a lot of different markets. The unique thing about it, Ernie, about this chart is these green and red bars. These green and red bars are not your standard Renko bars. They have a trend filter built into them. So when they close green, you're typically going to have a positive market delta. If they close red, you're typically going to have a negative market delta if all the other trend filters agree with the delta. In other words, what I'm saying is, is if you have green, you got more, more, more uh, demand than supply. And if you turn red, you got more sellers than buyers, okay? That being said, this is a very, very leading indicator because what happens is, is that if I'm in an uptrend, the moving average, let's say, just on this time frame crossed over here at 545 this morning. So for the last three and a half, now three hours and 45 minutes, if you've taken any shorts on crude oil, you've been deadly wrong. And it is your fault, not the market's fault, that you've been taking shorts because the market is saying it is going up. It is not going down. So since we know the smaller MA is crossed through the larger MA, that's why we use moving averages for trend direction. Not for support and resistance, not for crossover systems, but just that alone. The, the main ingredients to our chart are these red and green bars because there's so many ingredients that built into the Rico bar that you don't even see. That's the beauty about the system. So then we look at this oscillator down below. This is a very leading oscillator because what it does, it tells me if I know my trend is already built in into these green or red bars, then I know I know when supply and demand come into the market with a trend pullback. So let's take a look at the first trade right here, and you can see how the setup works. It's very leading. You've got plenty of time to look for the setup. So as let me make this nice and big so you can see what I'm talking about. This is a very simple trading system, very complex software we have that's built into the system, but very simple to understand. One second. Make these big so you see what I'm talking about. Blow it up real, real big so you can see it. So let's take a look at this little last buy setup. Okay, as we can see, when we start moving down, okay, right at that point when we get below 10%, that's at 736. So at 736, Ernie, you're below 10%. That's when you start looking for a buy setup. A buy setup did not happen on this time frame until just before 8 o'clock when it turned positive market delta right here. So you had a good 20 to 25 minutes heads up before you even had a buy signal. Does that make sense, Ernie? Because when it gets below 10%, right when it crosses below 10%, I am looking for a positive market delta, which it happened right here at this green arrow. That's your entry. When that green arrow printed, that's actually when positive market delta came in. Your entry would be the open of the next bar right there. There's your entry. Your stop loss is two ticks below the swing low. Okay? <clears throat> so you get a major heads up. Major, major heads up on these trades. If you go a smaller time frame, it works the same way. If I go, now here's a five sim Rico. If I go a smaller time frame, I've been in an uptrend, right? But you're going to get more trades. So let's go back to 6 o'clock this morning, unless, or we'll move it. A lot of you guys trade around 7.45 or so. Or 
Let's look at this last one. So it works on smaller time frames the same way. Once you get below 10%, you're looking for a positive market delta, which actually happened there. Your entry is open the next bar. You stop loss at two ticks below the swing low. So I like to use this small chart on the far right with market profile. It works really good with market profile because on market profile over here, that's actually volume coming into the market. That's strictly volume. So if I see a break retest is blue, red, or green line, then I know what I got is a potential setup on a full retracement. And I love trading off this small chart over here to the far right when it break retest on market profile. So if I'm breaking out of market profile and I retest market profile, what you did here at 27, that's this trade over here on the small chart, you're looking for a nice setup. You're looking for a full retracement buy or sell. Just vice versa, if I break, like I did on gold, break back inside of HVA. In other words, you look for these type of trades. Now, this one didn't go very far, but typically they run quite a bit. You'll break out, you'll retest. It's the only thing I know about market profile. It's worked for 34 years, same setup. Vice versa, let's say you were down here at LVA and you broke down through LVA. If you retested LVA, you look for a setup right there on a full retracement over on these charts. Vice versa, if you were below LVA and you come back inside it, I look for a retest of it on that retest. You look for the indicator over here to be at a full retracement. And you see tons. You're going to see thousands and thousands of trades that match up like this. I mean, it's been working for 34 years, the same exact setup. It's pretty cool. So once you break retest this green, blue, and red line, if you get a full retracement, you got two totally separate strategies. You get a retracement strategy that is matching up with a volume strategy. Because those big red, blue, and green lines are volume profile. That's strictly volume from all the hedge funds around the world, prop firms, amateur traders, professional traders, banks, institutional traders, a lot of algorithm activity. They'll spit out that natural support and resistance. And that, that's another leading indicator we have in the room. So if you really want to cherry pick trades, you can really just cherry pick your full retracement trades if you wanted to, if it matched up with the market profile and have extreme accuracy. Because profile when it breaks inside or outside, like this is a huge short on a full retracement. If I break up below the blue and retest the blue, so if I go back to 4, 433 and I see if I had a full retracement short, did I have a full retracement short at 433? Huge short. Look at this. See that earning, how it got above 80%? It's re, it broke retested the control point with the blue thick line, which is the most volume that's traded in that instrument for the day and look how beautiful that is right there negative market delta came in actually gave you right on the Fibonacci resistance gave you that big push down that was a break retest of the control point right here so you can actually use market profiles a leading indicator since you're talking about indicators you can use a leading indicators and lagging this is very leading because it's volume profile it's actually volume coming in the market so this will actually tell you the market profile when you got setups for break retest trades. Obviously, here's a control point also. Break retest here. Break retest. This is a control point this morning too. Look how we broke out, retested, and had a full retracement here. Right at the control point. Broke out, retested. Full retracement at the control point. Another one. Got a big move up. Big move up. Just like here, big move down. So you can combine, we have these templates set up. It works on all markets. You can combine market profile, market profile with full retracement trading. Now, if I go, let's say the S&P 500, a lot of you guys trade the S&P. That's what I'll show you real quick. It doesn't matter what type of market you look at. It's irrelevant. It's the same exact setup. You're trading order flow. That's what you're trading. You're trading. If they're going to try to mark the market up or mark the market down, you are a retracement trader trying to get full retracements, and that's what we're trying to do. But the setup will remain the same. 
it does not matter. So if I'm trading crude this morning, I mean, if I'm trading the S&P 500 this morning, it gave you a screaming buy, screaming buy right here. Right there. Why? I was in an uptrend already on the trend filter. Trend filter's up. I got supply coming all the way down. Major sellers, 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 sellers. There's my major reversal bar. There's more demand than supply. Am I below 10%? You open the bar, your fill would have been right at the 20 level. So 30, 20 would have been your fill. Got as high as 25 and a half. That's a five and a half point trade on that last setup. So I like trading off the five Simrenko off, off, off of gold. I mean off of um, S&P 500. If you want to trade smaller time frames, same way, you can do that also. Larger time frames, it has not had a deep retracement yet on uh, S&P 500 today. All right, so like I said, and you can go NASDAQ futures, you can go really anything that you want to trade. It really doesn't matter. NASDAQ, you get a lot of trades off the NASDAQ futures, but my point is, is that you're going to look for the same setups. Do you have to use market profile to look for break retest trades off that volume profile, thick red, blue, green line with to match it up with the retracements? No, you do not. If you just trade off the trend filter and the trend filter direction and trade off of this level here, off of the retracements, you do very, very well. Okay, but the same thing on the NASDAQ futures. If I'm, this is a screaming buy this morning. Screaming buy. Once again, if you get a, let's, well, this is the S&P, hold on, I'll wait till the NASDAQ loads here. But if you get, um, this is the S&P, so remember the S&P was at 505, was a setup right here, 505. That was a nice buy. Positive market delta. There you go. Now, if you look at the NASDAQ futures, it was just a screaming sell. It smacked you right in the face just a second ago. Look at this. Check this out, Ernie. You got above. Look how leading this is. It's very leading. So you get above 80% or 90%, and they're going more demand, more demand, more demand. And then this is your sell signal right here, right at the top. More sellers than buyers. That's how you do it. Okay. Pre news, if you look at it, same thing here. Got the M top. So you can trade, you know, it doesn't matter what markets you trade. It's the same exact setup. Exactly the same setup over and over. If you if you use a long term indicator, I mean the, the larger time frame on the NASDAQ futures. Check this out. I can go back to the whole trading session and pick this market apart. Right here, caught the low. Right here, caught the low. Right here, caught the low. Right here, started to catch the low, but we had a what? Transition, so you don't take this. You can take the sell, actually. Because here's your transition. Watch your transition. If I see the 20, I mean, if I see my smaller MA go down through my larger, I mean, my um, intermediate, get ready for a possible sell signal, it's like I did on gold, and you can take that side, too. All right, but notice the break retest trades. Look at NASDAQ futures. See how that's a break retest? Blue, red, green. Anytime a break retest, you got yourself a setup. 